Hello, welcome everyone. Uh, this is the first session that we have at the um, uh, sorry at the Zoom Studio Buenos Aires in English. That is the keynote of White Sea. Uh, first, we have Mary and uh, myself uh, who would be speaking today. Uh, thank you very much for for waiting for us a few seconds. And now now I'm going to start sharing my screen. Okay, perfect. Uh, well, uh, Marie, you you can begin. Hello, everyone. I think it's good morning for most of us. Uh, uh, welcome and thank you very much for joining our keynote, where we will try to make a quick recap of the what the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance does. Actually, we will uh, try to understand what is this coalition, uh, what we do, and what is upcoming, and uh, ways for you to get involved with the uh, YCIG. So um, today, uh, can we go to the next slide? Oh, uh, first of all, uh, just a quick reminder that uh, we have a code of conduct. And um, basically, as I mentioned before, at the opening ceremony, uh, we are trying to avoid any harassment behavior. So uh, if you see that there is uh, an issue or something, please send us an email. Uh, you have the email on, on the bottom of the slide. And now I'm going to continue with the session. So we'll start with a short introduction, then we'll present what we do, then we'll have time for some discussions, and if you have any questions, just feel free to ask them at any point. Uh, we are happy to hear from you. So uh, a few words about myself. Um, so I'm Mary, I'm a human rights attorney from Armenia. Um, I, at the moment, I am in the United States. Uh, I'm studying at the University of Pennsylvania Law School. Um, I'm an LLM candidate. I'm involved uh, with the Internet Governance Ecosystem since 2016. I'm a member of the European and Southeastern European um, IGF communities. Um, and uh, this year I am a YCIG uh, steering committee member for uh, Eastern European Group, as you already can imagine. And uh, my colleague Eileen, I pass the floor to you. Thank you very much. Uh, so. Uh, I'm Elin Sejas, I'm from Argentina. I'm, I have a background in criminal law and also uh, I'm interested in gender issues, digital literacy, feminist internet and IT law. Uh, currently I'm the steering committee member uh, representing the Gulag region for the White Sea and the regional engagement director for Latin America and the Caribbean for the Youth Seek also known as U Observatory. Um, also, you can find me uh, in other parts, also uh, part of the organizing committee of the Youth Like IGF, um, part of the program committee of the Youth IGF Argentina. That um, I hope that uh, you can join us tomorrow. There, there is going to be a session organized by YEC with invited guests uh, from local Youth IGF initiatives in Latin America but that's all from my side. I'm going to pass the floor to Mary. Thank you, Eileen. Uh, so to start uh, our presentation, we thought that it would be nice to first ask you what you know, what you have heard about YCIG. So we have this pop quiz uh, and the quest first question is YCIG is, and uh, Eileen will have uh, the poll up so you can vote. Let's, I will give you 20 seconds. Just open, choose the option that you think is the correct one. And the options are YCIG is a dynamic coalition, it's a youth organization, a youth movement, or a youth initiative. Okay, so we can see the results. So uh, two of you think that it's a youth organization and one of you thinks it's a dynamic coalition. And uh, the correct answer is that YCIG, the Youth Coalition on Internet Governance, is a dynamic coalition. Two words about dynamic coalitions. So at the IGF, um, there are um, 
several ways of intersectional work that uh, people can get involved uh, throughout the year before the annual Internet Governance Forum. And one of those is a dynamic coalition. Uh, these are informal groups that are recognized by the IGF Secretariat. And uh, um, these groups usually uh, come together to work on issues, uh, particular issues related to Internet governance. In our case, uh, in case of YCIG, uh, this dynamic coalition um, was formed to advocate for the voice of youth and we work towards the enhancement of um, uh, capacity to enhancement of youth participation in the ecosystem, um, capacity development, and uh, also this year we started doing mentorship programs. We can go to the next question, I think, Eileen. So what do you think? How old is uh, the YCIG? The options are three, five, seven, or 10 years old. And the correct answer is, Eileen, if we can go to the next slide. The correct answer is that this year we're going to celebrate the 10th anniversary of YCIG. So um, as a, like a teaser here, I would also like to invite you to our session at uh, the IGF. Uh, and uh, I hope uh, you will join and we will have interesting discussions on enhancing the role of youth in the ecosystem. And the last question is, how many regions are represented uh, in the YCIG? So we have three, four, five, or six regions. And you see the right answers on your screen. YCIG representatives come from five regions. It's Latin America and Caribbean, Eastern Europe, Africa and Middle East, um, Asia Pacific and Western Europe and other groups. So the steering committee members usually also come from all regional groups uh, and thereby we have, uh, we try to maintain the regional balance and representation of the voices of all youth from all the regional groups. Next, um, yeah, oh, I will pass the floor to my colleague Eileen, who will speak about what we actually do at uh, YCIG and what we have done so far this year. Eileen. Thank you very much, Mary. So what do we do at the YCIG? Uh, well, as Mary mentioned, we are a dynamic coalition that is officially recognized under the intersectional work of the IGF. As you know, the IGF uh, has uh, on one side the BPFs, the best practice forums, and on the other side has the dynamic coalitions that currently we have 18 dynamic coalitions, which is uh, a really good number to see that we have a lot of topics to discuss about uh, in internet governance. And our purpose is to advocate for the voice of children, young people, and young professionals in internet governance. Um, and as Mary mentioned, we are uh, turning 10 years uh, this year. Um, and since 2010 is a natural space for youth interested in IG related issues and at the IGF is the platform for engaging with all stakeholders on equally footing to amplify youth voices. And what we are uh, doing now during 2020, a very challenging uh, year for all of us. Uh, first of all, we started a questionnaire to see uh, what were the topics that our community was more interested about. And then uh, we have um, um, updated the YC Charter, which is like the constitution of the dynamic coalitions. Uh, then we also have uh, added a code of conduct and uh, well we have to mention we have been uh, working closely closely with the youth seek on shaping some working groups to submit sessions for the igf 2020 and we are happy to say we have accepted, accepted sorry three sessions for the igf 2020 in attracts inclusion data and environment also, uh, we are part of a youth engagement strategy at the IGF 2020. Uh, you probably saw that last year uh, it was shared uh, that there is a call for inputs from the young community 
to see which are the topics that young people are interested uh, uh, to be discussed at the IGF 2020. So please uh, go check the, the survey that uh, I believe Mary is going to share later on the chat. Also, I have to say that we are part of a, a collaboration with the Internet Society's IGF Youth Ambassadors Program 2020. We are when we are creating a mentorship uh, system uh, for the mentees, uh, which are going to be the IGF Youth Ambassadors Program uh, selected for this year, and we are really looking forward to be helping uh, to have a really strong. Uh, basis for the newcomers in of yeah, people in internal governance and also as another things that we have done this year we have participated at the igf plus survey which was a survey uh, where it was discussed one of the models of a uh, digital cooperation uh, that will be applied for the um, for the internet ecosystem one of them is the igf plus we have also participated at the Global Stakeholders Dialogue organized by Missions Publiques. We held a day zero session at Eurodic, and we were part of the open course of the Youth Lag IGF. And now we have the liberation time. Uh, so we are going to split into two rooms. Uh, I hope you can join us. Uh, let me second so I can share you in the different rooms well i think we can uh discuss now here uh, since we are few people uh i think it will be <clears throat> more interesting i'm not sure how you see it uh, mary um but well uh, one of okay one of the uh questions that we have is how do you see the igf globally uh, the first uh, question that we have for you guys is what changes do you see that has happened between 25, eh, sorry, 2005 and 2020 uh, when the YCs, uh, at the YCs, when the UN secretary pointed out that there was a necessity of an internet governance forum globally. Uh, so now we are hearing you. You can also type on the chat. Maybe we can go to the next slide so that we have the question. Okay. Um, so also, uh, other part of the of the discussion was uh, how do you mission IGF, ID, sorry, in your region? Uh, do you think it's it is enough the number of IGF initiatives in the region, and how do you see the participation levels of internet users? in IGF forums. I think we have a comment. Um, oh, we'll do, okay. Um, so, um, I'm not sure uh, we can start um, to see. It could be, you can say that if you don't know, it's it's okay. It's just to see um, what are your, your opinions. Can I talk? Yes. Okay, great. A minute, please. Okay. You hear me? Yes. Yeah. Uh, as of now, as I can see, it is a great idea. And I remember when I just received the link first. So that was very interesting. Especially nowadays because in the in these circumstances, especially due to the pandemic of COVID-19, so most of the people need to to, to know about the internet more and more from before. Because most of the time, most of the thing is just trying to do over the internet. And as you can meet through Zoom right now, so that really good thing and interesting. However, this opportunity or uh, the, yeah, this purpose is very interesting and can help others from before 2005 until now 2020. So it, it is something very, very interesting and there's a great changes in all about this month. That's all. Okay, thank you very much for your input. Uh, I'm not sure Mary if you want to add something. Uh, and I also, also wanted to. Mm -hmm. 
Yes. I don't know if also the others want to say something. Please go ahead. Hi, I could say something. Yeah, great. Um, I don't know specifically in the region, but well, I'm from Brazil, and I think that since the inception of of YC, there has been more pathways for the participation of youth and the civil society in internet governance forums. Uh, I don't think we see that uh, as largely distributed in terms of regionality or regions, but I do believe that this was important, especially regarding uh, some legislative uh, actions that we had, especially in Brazil with uh, Marco Civil the Internet, which is kind of uh, a internet constitution that they tried to establish in 2014 here in Brazil. So, although we did uh, through the legislative process establish open forums for debate, I think that the organization of the civil society prior to these debates through organizations like YSIG was detrimental for changes in the in the bill. That's it. Thank you very much. Um, I'm really happy that you mentioned about the the Marco do Civil because um, it's, I think it's a good um, um, background uh, note. To, sorry, I'm, I cannot think it in English. Uh, to say, okay, we have um, a way to say, okay, there are civil rights in in internet, but uh, we should uh, continue working from there. Exactly, exactly. I I completely agree with you, because even especially when we're dealing with civil rights and human rights, they do have uh, a political aspect always. That so it doesn't matter if we just you know write laws or write, or write uh, put them in, in, in codes and codification. If we don't have the the participation of a larger group in civil society, so. This was really important for for this specific legislation. Yes, I agree. Thank you, uh, Mary. Uh, Jumping. You, yes. Yeah, I just I I'm not from like region as uh, I said in the beginning, but uh, my observation for the last four years that I'm involved in internet governance is that. For civil society, and I'm also part of civil society. In the beginning. Um, we didn't understand that we had anything to do here because, um, well, digital rights were not something that um, was considered to be a multi-stakeholder process, um, you know, part of the process. And it was considered to be maybe something for the government or maybe for the private sector. But when our whole life became more or less online, it was obvious that things need to be done in this domain um, as well. And also another thing is that this field in a way um, developed um, too fast, maybe like too quickly. Uh, and um, uh, it was hard to catch up sometimes. And as a lawyer, I can say that the legal system tries, uh, does its best to catch up. But so far in a lot of cases, we really do not see it or these laws are very restrictive. And as I know right now in Brazil, there are several um, bills that are also connected with uh, the internet and um, online interactions, such as the one on uh, fake news. Um, so I think the role of civil society and especially youth in civil society, I mean youth in general, but particularly in civil society is uh, invaluable. Uh, and we, as we know, we are the ones that use these technologies since like childhood, we do not imagine the life without it. I mean, most of us. And um, this means that we need to make them accountable and also sustainable. So this was, this was what I wanted to add. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, I think we can uh, continue with the, with the questions for you guys. No, uh, let's end up. Okay, yeah, please. Noah, you can.
go ahead. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, Mary and Eileen, for your great presentation. Um, I'm Noah, I'm the African representative um, of the YCIG. I wanted to add my, uh, my two cents. Uh, I think that the IJF is, is the huge benefit from the IJF is networking with them, with the other stakeholders um, with, with similar minds or, or with different um, minds as well. Um, my first IJF was in 2017, so I'm, I'm not sure <laughs> about the previous versions. But I think that we need to take uh, the discussions from the IGF into the next step. So that's why the IGF uh, needs um, um, the, re the reshaping or the new planning ongoing right now. So I'm looking forward to, to see how the IGF plus uh, will be and how youth and um, marginalized groups will be represented in it. Thank you. Thank you very much, Noah. Yeah, indeed, it's, um, it's a problematic that we see that there is a lot of marginalized communities that they are trying, um, we are trying to include into the discussion, but it should be a collective uh, effort from everyone, not just a few of us. There is another uh, input. Okay, um, so I'm going to, to continue uh, with the questions. Um, so, uh, other, I think that uh, you see, but I'm not, not sure if all of us can, can say is, um, how do you see the, the model of the LAC IGF 2020, uh, 2020 sorry, the LAC IGF uh, 2.0 process? Um, because um, all of us are uh, updated with this, but the idea is that the LAC IGF uh, as we know now, it should be more more open and and include other other sector, other stakeholders as young people. Uh, so from those who are from the LAC region, maybe uh, you can uh, give more inputs in this part. Eileen, will you please give us an overview of what was happening in um, the LAC IGF before and now? Okay. Uh, well, uh, what I can say uh, from now, uh, the thing that has happened is that, uh, so you see there were a few uh, stakeholders represented um, at the composition of the LAC IGF. Um, but but uh, since uh, last year, uh, there has started a process to update the LAC IGF to be a 2.0 version. So it can include more stakeholders into the discussion because generally it's um, more focused on civil society, private sector. And for example, you see that um, it's, it's hard to have a link uh, with the governments to be interested in the discussion and also with the academia uh, because you see that not all universities are part of the like, IGF process. Uh, because we should understand uh, all the IGF, not only the global, but also the regional as a process. Uh, it's not just an event. Um, so the idea was also to see, okay, uh, what we can achieve from the LAG IGF. It's just, uh, we sit uh, a couple of days and discuss about internal governance matters in our region, or we are going to to start creating recommendations for the governments to be implemented or, or something of the sort. Because uh, it's, it really matters to see if it's only just a meeting or you are actually um, implementing something uh, to your internal government and also to the national and youth IGFs initiatives in your region. Uh, I'm not sure, and Mary or or Noah. Um, I'm not sure how is the um, the experience in the regional um, IGFs in your region. Uh, if you see that there has been a similar process or not. I can go first. Uh, so for Eurodic, uh, that is the pan-European IGF. If we can call it like that. 
Um, there, mostly, I can say that more or less all the stakeholders are um, presented. Um, of course, uh, there I can say that it's maybe again mostly civil society, but I cannot say that there is any uh, stakeholder that is missing um, or there is an overabundance of just one stakeholder. Um, but uh, I joined um, Eurodic uh, last year, so I cannot say uh, what was the situation there before that. But for 2019 and 2020, I can say that it is pretty much balanced representation there. Uh, for um, Southeastern European uh, Dialogue on Internet Governance, also known as CIDIC, um, there I can say that maybe so far we lack the technical community there and a bit of private sector, uh, but uh, there is enough representation from like international organizations, um, governments, um, uh, civil society, of course, and academia, but I think private sector is a little bit uh, lacking behind, uh, but uh, it is not a very big uh, problem at the moment. Uh, for me, um, maybe uh, more technical community, a little bit more will be more useful because in this process, I do not uh, foresee us going forward without the collaboration between all the stakeholders. Um, and uh, so far, it's more or less balanced, and I cannot say that there is any process of uh, updating, you know, these dialogues. Um, but for the global IGF, that's a different story, but we'll get to that in a bit. So I pass the floor to Noah. Um, thanks, Mary and Eileen. <clears throat> so for the African IGF, it's, it's uh, organized by the African Union. So you can, <clears throat> you can see representation from governments, and governmental institutions, so that's a great thing. And um, I believe that there is a good representation from most stakeholders, um, I, I, except the private sector, I may say. Um, and um, last year, the first Youth African IJF was organized. But the thing is with the with the African IGF that I get the impression that everything is prepared at last minute. For example, this year we, we still don't know if the African IGF um, uh, uh, will be hosted by the, by the African Union or will never have an African IGF this year. Uh, regarding the Arab IGF, um, it's, it's organized by the Arab League as well. Um, so, yes, we can see representation from governments, um, but very poor representation from the other stakeholders, like civil society, poor representation, um, youth, we don't have a youth Arab IGF uh, so far, and um, it's, it's not like there is no well marketing for the Arab IGF. So last year, we uh, very few audience was there. It was before uh, the lockdown. Uh, so, um, but very few people attended it. So yeah, that's it from my side. Thank you very much, Noah. Uh, yes, I, I, I have the feeling that we have uh, a complicated situation uh, because in some regions you have more representation of a certain stakeholder and in our it's not the same the same thing uh, but there is something that we can see it as it can push us to to work more and that uh, from our side as the CM people to see okay if you if we have to to have a youth meeting a uh, youth idea uh, regional and also uh, at national level. Uh, we have to see how to include all the stakeholders and to guarantee an equal voice uh, for everyone. Um, I'm going to move to the next slide, uh, which is basically what we have been uh, talking about uh, recently about youth participation in idea if you see that it's meaningful because uh, we can uh, think 
uh, about this question of how do you see that is youth uh, participation in the IGF space? If you think that your opinion is valued at youth or, uh, adults events, I mean youth adults, only adults uh, more than 30 years, uh, and what changes uh, do youth suggest to, to do, no? Um, and finally, my last question is, how do you think it's, do you think it's easy to start and maintain uh, during a, a long time youth initiatives uh, and which supports uh, do you need as young people to gain more visibility? So now the floor is for you. For you. Mary, maybe you can uh, speak about the experience and you think. Uh... Yes, I was going to share that. And also uh, two words about our session at Eurodic, the prevent, because we also discussed these questions uh, more focused on the Europe. Uh, so I think it will be interesting to compare the experiences that we will hear from participants from that region. And uh, Noah, please jump in with uh, your original experience as well. Um, so for um, for Europe, uh, for the two IGF communities that there are um, there in Europe, uh, we have two different um, programs. Let's call it like that. They, they are not um, youth IGF per se, but um, there is youth DIG, uh, which is the youth pre event for the uh, Eurodic, the European Dialogue on Internet Governance, and it usually happens. Um, so it starts with a series of webinars and then you meet a few days before the conference and it's like a pre-event. Um, so uh, this year, of course, everything was online. So we conducted a series of uh, webinars. Um, this is uh, very well supported by the Eurodic Secretariat and uh, they provide as much support as possible. So I'm really thankful for this kind of uh, support and understanding of the importance for youth. To be involved and uh, this process uh, culminates uh, in uh, youth messages um, so the participants um, decide uh, their uh, main priority topics and uh, come up with um, uh, statements uh, and uh, let's not call them demands but messages uh, directed towards different stakeholder groups that are later shared at a special session during Eurodic and also um, during you know different sessions and um, usually there is some kind of advocacy strategy involved with dissemination uh, of these uh, messages. For CIDIC um, there is a youth school which is also again online this year and CIDIC will happen uh, later in September um, on the week of 21st of September and um, Usually, uh, youth school participants are very much involved with all the sessions, which is, uh, I forgot to mention, that is also the case with Eurodic. So these are not, if you think about it, maybe youth IGF in the classical sense, but uh, um, I think these are interesting um, initiatives uh, that uh, the local IGF initiatives um, try to empower and uh, support and uh, they organize it every year. I don't remember how for how many years, but uh, for at least uh, I think four or five years for sure. And uh, I also wanted to share with you what uh, some parts of the discussion that we had during our YCIG pre-event at Eurodic. Uh, so there we had representatives from different youth IGF initiatives from Europe, namely from Portugal and Italy. And uh, Joa and Veronica um, actually were exchanging views on how they um, organized it, uh, what, was, uh, the, what were the challenges, what were the advantages and disadvantages. Uh, so it was uh, very interesting to hear um, similar uh, challenges and also some uh, differences. Uh, one thing that is of course obvious is the problem with funding, um, which I think this year is a little bit um, not a big issue because you don't need a venue, you don't need a lot of things. Um, maybe you just need a Zoom license to organize um, a webinar in terms of expenses, uh, but finances usually is a big problem. Uh, and maybe first or second uh, 
challenge is the problem of being taken seriously. Uh, this is an issue, I guess, everywhere, because um, even in you know these very well developed countries that we have in our mind, whatever whichever this country will be for each of us, uh, even there, if you are under 35, you are still young, you don't have experience, you don't have uh, any you know worldview enough uh, so that you know it, it, that it's sufficient for you to organize something meaningful and be taken seriously. And one thing that I found very interesting during our session and also during the preparations, I'm sorry that I'm taking so much time, but I think this is interesting to share. Um, it was that um, um, working with universities is a very interesting um, um, avenue to think about. I think this is done in the LAC region, um, as I understand, uh, but for Europe, it, it is still not, not so widespread. And I think there is quite some, uh, you know, arena to work there. And uh, the universities in Italy were actually very interested um, to work with youth. So as this year, Eurodic was, for instance, uh, um, online, virtual, and next year it's going to be in Italy, hopefully, then we will see whether this one year collaboration or potential, you know, conversations uh, really resulted in anything. But I think it was interesting to, um, you know, understand some avenues for new collaborations. And last thing, and I promise I will not take any of my space, uh, is uh, I would like to share the example from the Armenian Youth IGF, uh, which is going to be organized, I think, for the second time this year. Uh, and um, it is uh, supported by uh, the um, Internet Society Armenia and uh, previous uh, alumni, um, I mean, previous participants from uh, the Armenian uh, School on Internet Governance. So I think this is also um, a good um, strategy for later, organ like uniting and organizing your youth initiative. Um, and like from uh, the national, go to regional and then to global and you know, have really meaningful youth participation because I personally do not foresee any meaningful participation unless uh, the youth know what they are doing. And it's not only about being in the room, in other words, it is about um, being there, of course, but um, making meaningful contributions. I think it is also very important um, for being taken seriously. This is all on my end and sorry for speaking for long. <laughs> No, it's okay. Thank you very much, Mary. Um, let me see. Um, so um, maybe we can uh, share a little bit our social media uh, so you can check. Uh, so we have a website, a mailing list, which is the, the main uh, channel of communication that we use. We have the Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. And, and now we are going to try to, to chat with you, not just on the slides, it could be on the Youth Coalition, of course, and if you have any questions about the upcoming IGF 2020, which you know is going to be a bit crazy, three weeks long, uh, so we are here to help you. I just wanted to add to that that, you know, um, it is uh, a bit confusing for people to know that um, YCIG is not an organization, it's not an initiative, it's not a movement, it is a dynamic coalition. So the concept of this is a bit strange and weird for a lot of people that are not really involved with the intersectional work at the IGF. But I think that um, joining YCIG is a very interesting experience because it is completely different from being part of a youth organization. In this case, you represent your whole community from your original group, of course, together with your colleagues, you have direct access to many things that a lot of your organizations do not have access in a way. Um, and I will explain this. Uh, so for instance, there are a lot of uh, um, activities that happen in between two IGFs. And uh, as IGF is not so much a uh, bottom up uh, process, it's uh, very much a, a top down process. Um, you do not have much say in all of this, but being a dynamic coalition recognized by uh, the IGF secretariat, you have um, more, maybe that's not the right word, more credibility to work directly with the secretariat and um, come up with more ideas uh, to do something. Um, so 
I would encourage everyone to uh, check our social media and consider joining our mailing list. Um, also the group on Facebook because we post very interesting opportunities there and why not after some time maybe also consider running for the steering committee member position because uh, from my experience uh, this was completely different than uh, being member of a youth organization uh, because you are in different shoes and um, it is it is a completely different uh, uh, view on things uh, because you uh, work closely with other dynamic coalitions dpf as eileen mentioned so it, it and then you also work with your community, which uh, includes working with other youth initiatives and organizations. But in a way, it's a bit uh, it's a bit different, but very interesting experience to be part of a dynamic coalition. And as this one works for um, raising the voice of youth and on our capacity development um, and youth empowerment, I would encourage you to think about it and. Um, join us uh, because uh, this is uh, why we are here and um, this is in a way you know paid forward uh, uh, type of organization um, so thank you very much for uh, listening to us uh, and i'm sorry if i was talking too much uh, and i will uh, give the floor to Aline or noah if you want to add something and yeah that's it thank you Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, maybe Noah, uh, so you can share a bit more. Yeah, thank you. Thank you, um, Mary and Eileen, for, for the great um, presentation about the YCIG. I wanted to share about... Ah, well, um, being part of the, of the Youth Coalition, it has been a brand new experience, as Mary was saying, uh, because uh, we have to really dig into um, very IGF um, uh, matters that are maybe very technical, but it has been a very interesting experience because uh, you are in direct contact with the IGF secretariat. So you have to see, okay, we have to work on a DC uh, session for the IGF to attend the, the meetings and to be discussing uh, with internet policy makers uh, on how to approach different issues. So it has been very, very interesting and also very challenging, I, I should say, <laughs> to adapt to the new change uh, because it's not the same uh, via the shoes of an organization than to be at the shoes of the youth coalition. But we are, we are happy to be part of this um to have a very good community and uh, that has been very supportive especially I taking it into oh yeah yeah i'm sorry i didn't want to yeah. interrupt no, no no i was just about to say that especially that we are 10 years old is a very long time in terms yeah, of and internet what i liked in our journey that we're we're collaborating with other youth organizations as well and uh, I, I, I like that we're creating, uh, we're having new allies. We, we don't want youth organizations to compete. Instead, they can collaborate and offer better opportunities to their communities. So I guess that we took a new path this year of, of creating a youth umbrella for, for all youth organizations networks so I'm, I'm i'm proud of that as well yeah so basically to build on what noah said uh, we didn't want to have the duplication of efforts but we thought that um as this is not a um, um, classical organization uh, we can serve as a forum for all the youth uh, um, involved in internet governance, whether as individuals or as initiatives or organizations. And as we kind of stand close to the secretariat and all the processes that are not open for everyone to participate, um, we made it our mission in a way to collaborate with new organizations and serve as this umbrella. And uh, I'm very happy that all of this um, uh, became true, became a reality. And uh, I hope uh, uh, ICIG will continue uh, this tradition, because I think it's it's 
better to unite forces than to, you know, work separately and in a way also duplicate the effort. Thank you very much, Mary. Uh, I think we, we can make the closure now, uh, thinking into account that uh, there should be starting a, another session soon. Um, so if you want to say some final words uh, from the audience, uh, please go ahead or otherwise we make the closure now. Yeah, I wanted to say thank you for your time and all of the information that you shared with us. And we cannot wait for the next session also. Thank you. Thank you very much, Ricardo. Uh, and thank you, everyone, uh, for joining us today. And, and see you. See you around. Eileen, will you please share uh, the link for tomorrow's session? Uh, yes, I'm... The details yes. here in the chat. Yes, we are, we are going to share a, another email uh, later. Uh, so please stay, stay tuned. Okay. Bye-bye. Bye. Thank you so everyone. much. See you around. <laughs>